All right. Before we get going with this, is there anyone who did not complete the setup yesterday? Because if so, we want to get you taken care of now. Anybody not do setup? Happy to help. Um, I have not done the setup. Okay. What I want you to do is I'm gonna walk you through this. I'm going to paste this in the classroom channel for those of you who that have not done this. And when you go to that, what you're going to do is you're going to clone the eGen replacement tool as a new repository, and you're going to call it Mongoose Movies. That's what this first command does here. Okay. You're, this is the same process you're going to do to get started with your flights lab. So I think reviewing it is probably a good thing here right now. So if you're, even if you've done this, I want you all to pay attention because I want you to make sure you get your flights lab set up properly this afternoon. Um, you're going to clone the repo. This command here, git clone, and the name of the repo that we're cloning, and then what we're renaming it as when we clone it. Okay, mongoose movies. So this will take the eGen replacement template that we've given you which is basically just a scaffolded Express app. It has a couple things set up by default. It's all ready to go for us. And we're going to clone that as Mongoose Movies. Then we CD into it and we remove the Git info. We remove the Git info because we don't want it to have that remote back to eGen replacement, okay? You're not gonna be able to push to that because you don't own that repo. And there's no reason for it to be linked to that repo. The other reason we remove the git info is because you don't want our commits on there. If you look at the eGen replacement tool, you'll see that the commit history is David and I with 10 commits. You don't want those 10 commits on your project, right? If you're posting a project on GitHub that David and I wrote the template for, yeah, it's a template we use in class, but you don't want our commit history on there. So make sure you remove your Git info. Okay. Then we install the node modules, re reinitialize it as a Git repo. And then you're going to add an upstream. The reason we're adding an upstream remote here is so that you can pull my code whenever I push. And I'm going to push after every feature I implement, which is what you should be doing too. Then you can sync by adding those commands in. And when you do these, you should have style sheets. You should have a bunch of style sheets that we've given you in the code, which I will show you here. So I'm gonna go into code, code alongs, mongoose movies, and I'm gonna open that up in VS Code. And you'll see here that I've got, that all these style sheets indicate that I have the right repo. Do you see those? I'm getting it there now. Okay. I see everything except the movies. Um, I don't see style sheets either. You want to share your screen? Yeah. Okay, open up your public directory. Oh. Okay, uh, so you don't have it. So open up a terminal here in VS Code. Let's take a look at what we got. Type git remote dash v. Okay, git fetch dash dash all. Git reset space dash dash hard space, uh, yep, uh, upstream slash main. Now you're good. Cool, thank you. Yep. Okay. 
Anybody else while we're here? I just have a general question for stuff like mm -hmm. photologs and like lecture material. We're not supposed to publish that to our GitHub, right? It's only like our projects and labs. Correct. Okay. Um, even your labs, yeah, your labs will be public um, because I think our eGen replacement tool is public. Uh, don't know why it wouldn't be. What exactly does eGen replacement and all that mean and do? It's uh, there's a tool called the Express Generator, which is something that was provided by Express. It's just a template to get started with Express apps, and it was outdated, so we rebuilt it, and that's what it is. It's just a template to get started with Express apps, so that you don't have to do npm init, create a package JSON, set up all your middleware. Like the templates exist to make our lives easier. And that's just one example of that. Like when you want to get started building a new Express app uh, with like a simple web server and the ability to write routes, controllers, et cetera, et cetera, um, having a template like that is obviously beneficial. So we provide one for you. And we're going to do the same thing with auth when we eventually get to Google OAuth. Um, <clears throat> you know, when you, work out in the real world, you're going to have a template for stuff like that that's already set up. And being able to, instead of having to write all of that code from scratch every single time, just pull from a little template and say, okay, this is this is my starting point. It has everything configured. All I need to do is add an env file with a couple variables in it and then npmi and I'm good to go. Like those are important, hugely important tools to be able to have access to. And that's why we provide them for you. That it will exist out in the real world. I don't want you, any of you to feel like that's cheating or like it's um, making it so you're not going to learn the code. It's essentially allowing you to focus on the code that's really the most important, which is your server code, your routers and your controllers, rather than having to set up all of the stuff that's going on with auth every single time you start a new repo, because that code is intimidating. Like if you look at the code for auth, it's, I mean, you're going to have, we're, we're going to go over this next week, but um, the code for auth is, uh, let's see here, that ENV was for Bonkus movies, so we're fine on that. Um, where is it? So here's your, this is our passport code, okay? Uh, you're, you're not going to... Oh, sorry. This is our code for passport. Like we're going to write this code next week. This is one method, right? Like you're not going to want to write that every single time you have to build an application. Okay. This is, this can be scary. We're going to talk about what every single one of these things means, but being able to have to do that on the fly every single time you do it is not, it's a nightmare. It's going to make you not want to build anything. So the template we provide for you is going to have all this stuff baked in already. Cool. All right. Let's do this thing. So big picture here. Um, the purpose of the schema and model components can be seen in this little diagram here. And this is something we've kind of talked about already, and we're gonna explore a little bit more today uh, as we code this app out. Um, is this font size okay? Can you all still read that? Or do I need to go back up one? I can, I can read it. Okay. Um, a schema that we set up as our blueprint for data is going to be compiled into a model and the model is what's going to be accessing our database and performing our queries and using methods to create, read, update, and delete data. Okay. A lot of this in this section right here is just a review of what we've already covered. Okay. Assuming we need to store cat documents with this following schema, where we have a cat schema, we have a name and a breed, both of which are strings. Okay. Cat schema is then compiled into a model 
Again, notice the capital C in CAT indicating that it's a model and is exported so that inside of our controller functions, we are able to import it and then use that to perform operations, create, for example, right? We're going to create a cat named Morris with a breed of orange tabby. This function error document cat doc thing, this is just another way, another uh, or different syntax for being able to do the same thing as promises. We use dot then, uh, but you may notice in the mongoose documentation that you see error first callbacks. Okay, this is just another way to handle document uh, like accessing the document that you've created or accessing the result of a query. If you use uh, whatever the model is dot find, you can access all of the resulting documents that are found by using a promise, which is what we've been doing, the dot then and the dot catch. Or you can use what's called an error first callback function. This is how we used to teach it, but it's confusing. And we want to switch to newer syntax, which is recent, most rec more recently being uh, put into documentation by Mongoose, which is why we switched over. Okay. So we've already, those questions were in a lecture yesterday, so I'm not going to, not going to answer them. We're not going to do them again. Okay. And we've already looked at what we're going to build. So let's get going. Let's take a look at what we're starting with here. Okay. Our starter code has the bin directory with this www.js. Somebody remind me what this does. Nobody. It's just HTTP server configuration, stuff that we don't have to worry about. Okay. This is just setting up a server and listening. All this code. Again, you don't want to have to write this. This is just setting up an HTTP server and listening on port 3000. Okay. We're able to change that on port 3000. If you wanted to run it on a different port, you could change it here, but please don't. If you wanted to run an HTTPS server and have a security certificate installed on your machine, you could also adjust this file to do that. Again, don't, but this is where you would go if you wanted to do that. Okay. Node modules. I installed those yesterday when we downloaded this. If you don't see a node modules directory, you should type npm i. And that'll make sure that you have node modules installed. Public is where we have our style sheets. Notice we've got quite a few of them. All the styling is done already for this app. We're not going to focus on styling. We're going to focus on the, on the JavaScript stuff. But everything is set up already so that when we eventually code this out, we're not going to have to write any CSS. Routes. Just like we have in our template, or just that, like we have in the eGen replacement tool, that's exactly what we're starting off with, okay? The same thing we have in that template. We have two routes set up. We have a root route, which is just a GET request to localhost 3000, which is going to render an index page. We're passing a title of Express to that, and I'm going to show you what that looks like when we fire this app up here in just a second. We also have a user's router, which we're going to turn into something else. This is just a router that's stubbed up. Again, we're following what the express generator had back when it was a good tool to use. Okay. And when we rewrote it, we were like, you know, it's usually pretty handy to have a router already stubbed up. We just changed the name of it and we have a resource router. Like, that's great. So we'll include users. And if they have users, then Cool, use that for users. If not, just rename it. That way you have a router that's all ready to go. <clears throat> and it looks like if we do a request to slash users, 
a get request to slash users, we'll see the text respond with a resource. So those are the two routes that we've got set up. You can see both of those routers are mounted in our server JS. Okay, what middleware do we have? We're, we've got our EJS set up here. We've got logger set up. We have the ability to use JSON. We have the ability to extract data coming in, form data coming in and add it to rec.body. We have access to our files in our public directory. And we have our two mounted routers and we have our error handling. Okay, so that's what we've currently got in our server JS file. And in our views, all we have is this index page where we're dy dynamically passing it a title. Where is this title coming from? The index router. Let's go look at the index router. Yeah, right here. In the locals object, we're passing a title of express. Okay. What is this that I'm highlighting right here? A controller. Okay. Yep. Specifically, it is a, a recursive function. Callback function? Yeah, callback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a callback function that is a controller function, right? It needs to be in a controller's directory. So we're going to refactor this a little bit here as we go. Excellent. Let's fire it up. When you fire it up, you're going to see this. You see, when we go to our localhost 3000, our request comes in to our server, is funneled down our middleware pipeline, goes through all these requests, and finally hits this route. And it's like, OK, is there a route here that matches forward slash? That's a match so far. Let's go inside. Oh, look, it's a match. So we're going to render our index view and pass it a title of express which is why we see this on the page. Cool. I'm going to split my terminal here because we're going to need to install some stuff. We know we're going to be using Mongoose, right? So let's install it. NPM I Mongoose. We also know that to connect to our database, we need an ENV file. Okay, so let's see here. So let's touch .env. Again, you should see that that comes up as grayed out. Inside of that, we're going to put our connection string. So we didn't give a connection string for, okay, perfect. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have, and I, just to make sure I don't copy this incorrectly, I always just copy and paste this part of it. Database URL equals, and then that's where you're gonna put your connection string. You can use the same connection string as you've been using for all of your apps. Just change the thing after the slash before the question mark to movies. Is there anybody that does not have a working connection string? It's totally fine if you do. I'm gonna, I can paste one on the classroom channel that you can use to follow along. So if you don't, just say something. 
when I'm naming something in between like the slash and the question mark, can I use like the dash too? So like Mongo's Mongo's dash movies or will I believe it? So? I don't think that there's a restriction on that. Um, let me see if I have one named as such. Oh, shit. On one of the uh, reps I was practicing for uh, the dev skills lab, I tried out one that had dashes and it seems to work fine, so. Yeah, we'll just go with it. If you have problems, we can figure those out later, but you should be fine to do that. Okay, Lily? Lily, what's up? Hey, I'm getting um, like a red error message that says connection string must start with MongoDB or MongoDB plus serve or mm -hmm. RV. Um, and it's kind of like up top. Um, but you're in the ENB folder, right? Yeah. Do, does your Mongo Mongoose connection not start with that? Um, it does. <clears throat> okay. Um, Let me. I'm going to paste mine in here real quick and hide it. Uh, let me just pause the recorder real quick. All right. So everyone got their connection string entered. Is there anybody that had problems with that? Excellent. Jan, what's up? I just had a question whether we had to uh do like movie or movies or does it matter but you can call your databases whatever you want realistically it would be more sensical to call this movies because it's a movie collection database so movies plural is what we're collecting got it well cool. okay so we've done all that already Next thing we need to be able to read that .env file and read the contents of it is .env, the node module. So let's install that. We're going to type npm i dot env. Okay. And that installs the node module. The next thing we need to do is we need to go import it somewhere so that we're using it. So in our server, all the way up at the top, above all our other imports, we're going to put that right up at the top. We're going to import .env slash config.js. Okay. We're going to configure this connection string to work in a connection module, and then I'll push my code because that will be implementing a feature. Okay, So we're going to create a directory called config. Inside of that config, we're going to have a file called database.js. We're going to import mongoose from mongoose. Use the autocomplete. Well, you're again, this is probably going to be the last time you actually have to type this out because it's in the auth template we're going to give you. But you'll have to type it out for your lab because you're following along. So we import mongoose and then we're going to write mongoose.connect process.env dot database URL. So all this is saying is import mongoose and then connect to the ENV or connect to the database URL that we've stored in our ENV.
Eduardo? Um, just so conceptually understand how it works. When you fire up the program, the ENV starts running by itself? When you fire up the program, this first line of code runs. And what this does is it says, hey, take all of the environment variables that we're storing in the, in, in the ENV file and add them to the process that is running in Node. So if I have a key value pair store, the key value pairs that look a little different in an ENV, right? It's key and then equals and then the value, but it's adding them to an object and the process um, object that's running in the background in Node. So this line will take everything that you have in your ENV file and attach it to process, which is running in the background during a Node application or during okay. an Express app. So anything that's in that ENV file will be accessible via process dot whatever. Pro, well, it would be process dot ENV dot whatever the value you gave it was. So for our database URL, we have process dot ENV dot database URL, and the key is database URL, mm -hmm. and the value is whatever we put to the right of the equals. Okay. What else does that? process object have or what else can we use it for we're going to be using it for this but there's a bunch of other stuff on there that's a giant deep dark rabbit hole that i'm not going to get into right now because it's going to take us off track okay but it's in the express docs if you want to go check it out okay thank you mm -hmm. you'll also notice if you look at the bin file you can see that the port is being stored on there there's a bunch of bunch of cool information that's on there. I think that's the only thing in here. But yeah, fun stuff. So now that we have access to that, is that code running? I put it in here. Is it running? Somebody tell me why or why not. Is Nodemon running? Nodemon no, is running. We yes, we haven't sent a request to MongoDB, or is that why not correct? We haven't added it there, <laughs> or more specific. Why? What? What makes this code run? Have to turn it on. More specifically, like dot on. No. Has to be imported to the server. Yes. In order to execute this code, we have to import the file somewhere to say, hey, go run this code. We're not doing that right now. This is right now, this is just a JavaScript file with some code in it. If we want to run this code, we have to import the file. So we're going to go to our server here. And then right beneath our logger, we're going to import config. Use your autocomplete for this database.js. Now that code is running. Can we tell it's running? I don't see it running. That's what the next step is going to be. And that's what we did yesterday. Is we're going to take what we know about this, well, like we did it two days ago. We're going to take what we know about MongoDB connections, and we're going to take advantage of that object, and we're going to clean up our code a little bit to show that we're actually connected to our database. Okay. So this is just saying here, we start the app. The app's already running, right? Awesome. Wouldn't it be great to know that our connection to a database was successful? So that's what we're doing. Again, this is just a recap of what we've already done. We're adding an event listener to the mongoose connection. So this code will connect to your database. The rest of this code here that is in the lesson that we gave you, all this is for is just so that we can see we're connected. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not going to type that out. It's going to be in every template we've given you. I'm just going to give you that. So you can just copy and paste that. And now we can see that we are connected down below. Eduardo? Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, in server.js, why do you require like the parentheses for connecting to the database on the import? 
oh, I always forget this one. There's, um, I think this one is importing specific files. I, th I think it also has to do with load order. Um, let me get back to you on that one. Mm -hmm. I know the answer to this, but I don't remember what it is. So I'll look it up and figure it out. So let me put that on my list. Okay. I will get an answer back to you on that on lunch or next break we have. Cool. So we're importing this database connection right here. And this says, hey, go run this code. That connects to our database using the code that's in that file. And we can see down here that we are connected. So once you are connected, I want you to click on classroom. Click on the you mongoose when you are seeing a connection notice down at the bottom of your terminal chris um i've got an error module not found so what does that mean does it say module not found mongoose no um okay. cannot find module uh import it and then it reads out all the way to config database uh, imported from the server. Do you have a config directory with a database.js inside of it? I do. Is your import labeled with a .js? Yes. Let's check it out. All right. A T, an extra T. Oh, okay, cool. What does that mean? He's not using folks. Autocomplete. Autocomplete. Cool. I so do R do RS. RS. Yep. Put your cursor in the terminal and type RS. Down here. Yep. Okay. And hit enter. Cool. Okay, so we have another error. Let's check this one out. Uh, let's see here. Config is spelled right. Don't you need mm. to install Mongoose? Oh, there's the, yep, yeah, I'm not reading that error. So see where it says there cannot find package mongoose. Mm -hmm. That means you haven't installed mongoose. Oh, so. okay. MPM space. What file can you check to see what, what was in, installed? Uh, package. Yeah. There you go. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oops. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm getting an error also. I'll share my screen. Okay. Um, mine's saying, um, looks like a mongoose oh. error. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this is the URI parameter to open URI must be a, and you have a problem here with your ENV file. So let me pause the recorder. Okay, Jen. So um, I'm getting an error on my terminal saying my app has crashed. Uh, connection string with MongoDB. Invalid scene. Let's check it out. Uh, 
I'm I'm not getting any errors, but um, I'm not seeing the connected to Mongoose database thing either. Okay, um, let's go ahead and I'm going to pause this. All right. Share my screen again. So we are all connected. Um, let's start with a couple questions here. Uh, we already answered those. Sorry, those were in the other lesson. So we've already had these questions. Okay. We pulled some of those from the Express to do's lecture. So I'm going to, we're connected. I'm going to add commit and push my code. Right. This is add uh, connection to MongoDB. We are good to go. Jen. Should we be um, adding and pushing our code, or is it automatically doing that when you do it? Since we're where are you trying to add on? and push your code to? Nowhere. Like I can't. Yeah, it's not going anywhere if I commit it. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah. The only links that you have for remotes are for repos that you don't own. So, yeah. All right. So defining schema, schemas in Mongoose. We're going to create a, mod, a module for the schema and the model that we're going to use for our movie. Okay? And just like we have in the previous apps that we've built, we have to have it a blueprint for our data. And that's the purpose of a model. A model is going to be the blueprint that we use for our data. And the data in this application we're going to start with is a movie. Okay? We're eventually going to talk about embedding and referencing and setting up different data relationships between different entities. But the long and short of what we need to do here is set up a model where we can store all of the information that we're going to need to store in a movie document. Okay, So MVC is all about organization. Let's create a directory for it. So MKDIR models. And inside of that models directory, you're going to touch movie.js. Remember, your model is the only file that you will have for a given resource that will be named singularly. Everything else will be named plurally. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yep. The model is the only file that you will have for a resource that is named singularly. So you'll have movie.js. The router will be called movies.js. The controller will be called movies.js. The views directory will be called movies. But the model is called movie.js. Okay. So every time we write a model, we're going to have a single file where we define the schema, compile that schema into a model, and then export that model. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to import Mongoose from Mongoose. And we're going to give ourselves a little shortcut here. And you're going to see why this is more important when we get to referencing, really. it's This shortcut doesn't really pay off for us until we get to referencing. So it may seem like we're taking extra steps here to do something kind of silly for one reason, but it will make more sense down the road, like on Tuesday next week. Okay, So we're going to say const schema equals mongoose.schema. Then we're going to write our schema out. And this is going to evolve over time. We're going to be adding stuff. We're going to be taking some stuff away. We're going to be adjusting stuff because that's what happens when you develop, especially if you don't plan your things out ahead of time, right? You want to make changes to this as minimally as possible. Sometimes you're going to need to add things. Sometimes you're going to need to be like, wait, 
that's probably not the best way to handle this. I probably should have done it a little differently. So you adjust your model, you wipe your data, and you enter more resources as you go. Okay. So let's get this going. We're going to write const movie schema equals new schema. Okay. Notice how I stubbed that up so that I get the syntax right on this. We're going to give it a title, which is going to be a string. We're going to give it a release year, which is going to be a number. We're going to give it an MPAA rating, which is going to be a string. We're going to give it cast which is going to be an array of strings. And we're going to give it a now showing property, which is going to be a Boolean. Notice if we want the data structure to include something like an array of strings, all we have to do is put string inside of an array. This is saying our cast will be an array of strings. Realistically, this is not how you'd want to build this application. Okay, you're going to see that as we go through this. We can't start off with referencing because referencing is a complicated topic. And we're going to refactor this down the road to do that. But the best option here would be instead of storing each performer in a movie, as a string, we would actually reference their document IDs. So sneak peek, we're going to create performers too. We're going to have a link to a performers uh, create view where we have a form where we submit the information about our performer, and then they're added to the database. Once they're added, what we can do is we can store their object ID in here. Instead of their name, it's just an object ID. And Mongoose gives us the option through a magical, magical, wonderful, amazing method called populate to turn that object ID into a full document when we make a query. It is wild that you're able to do that. It's one of the most powerful tools available at our disposal when we're using Mongoose. I think it's the coolest thing about Mongoose. Populate is amazing. So you'll see that on Tuesday, though. Cool. Again, notice the cast properties type as an array of strings. A property is referred to as a path or field, but sometimes you're just going to hear it be called a property. Is there a awesome. reason why cast is a different color there? It doesn't seem to like it. Um, I think it is because of that array. Uh, maybe ca cast might be a reserved word. No, it's because of the array. It's just showing up a little differently because of that. It's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that code. So um, probably just because it's an array, really. Yeah, I tested it. It's because it's an array. Like I made other ones and all the arrays mm -hmm. come out like that. Yeah. And like it says here, we're going to be adding more functionality to this schema as we go. Okay, There are eight built-in schema types that are available for use inside of these schemas. String, number, Boolean, date, array, those are all pretty self-explanatory, right? Mongoose.schema.types.objectID. We're going to use this one a lot because this is how you reference things. Instead of storing things as strings and numbers, we can store object IDs inside of these documents that point to other documents. Okay. We're not going to talk about the other two. That's above our pay grade right now. One thing you should know about MongoDB, 
it is not designed to be able to hold things like pictures and audio files and movies. Okay. You want to have things in here like JSON objects, like documents. You don't want to put binary data in here. So that means when you eventually get to the point, you're like, oh, I want to be able to have image uploads to my site. You can't do that. Technically, you can do that, but you really shouldn't do that. That's not what MongoDB is designed to do. There are other methods that you can use to handle that, and we're going to teach you those in Unit 3. Or it makes more sense. If you want to store an image URL in here, that's just a string. So if you want to have a separate, and that realistically, that's how we approach it, is we'll use an image upload site where to upload an image, get a URL for it, and store the URL in MongoDB. That would be the appropriate way to do that. But you do not want to store things like pictures, photos, or uh, pictures, songs, videos. That's That's all binary data. You do not want that here. Did y'all see timestamps already? Okay. Another thing that we have at our disposal is the ability to have timestamps added to our um, to our document to see when it was created and when it was updated. Okay. We're going to have a created at and updated at field that are automatically added to every model, and we'll be able to see whenever the last time changes were made to a document, okay? And it's really easy to enable that by just going down here between your closing curly brace and your closing parenthesis, putting a comma, creating another object, and just say timestamps, true. That's it. Now we have timestamps. And you'll see those once we start creating data. Super handy. You should always put timestamps on everything. Can you also stamp who the contributor was when something's been updated? Um, not, not by default with the setup that they have, but you can do that with code that you write yourself. The reason is because if you're using a connection string, the connection string has your user info in it. So that information isn't accessible anywhere because you're using your connection string to use the model to connect to Atlas. It's going to be the same connection string for everyone that uses your app. What you should do if you want to do something like that, and that's a great, great question. Like, how do I tell what user has interacted with what data? You would put a field on the user or, or on the data in the schema somewhere that says modified by. And every time somebody changes that data, you would include their username. Once we get to auth, you, you'll understand how to do that. Cool. So now we got timestamps. Mike? Does it matter if we don't use camel casing for timestamps? Um, the convention right here, the way that Mongoose wants it is this. So we can't use camel casing. If you use camel casing, it won't work. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's that's because it's a single word, right? Timestamp. Probably. Yeah. I I don't even know. I just all I know is that MongoDB tells me it wants it that way. So, or Mongoose rather tells me it wants it that way. So that's how I'm gonna I have to play by their rules. Cool. So we have a schema, but again, schemas don't perform actions on a database. Models do. So we have to compile this schema into a model. So as you can see here, we're going to say const movie. Again, capital M is mongoose.model. We're going to call it movie. 
and we're going to use our movie schema. And we're going to export movie. Blueprint for our data in a schema is compiled into a model and exported. This movie is going to be used to perform CRUD operations on our database. We're going to write movie.create, movie.findbyid, movie.findbyid uh, and update, movie.findbyid and delete. Okay. All of those methods are available now on movie. So just in that single line on number 15, you basically took this whole thing you built there and then compiled it into this model named movie. Exactly. Brilliant. It is. Mongoose is the shit. Cool. I'm going to add commit and push my code. Uh, we'll call this add movie model. And we're going to take a break. Be back in 12 minutes. So I'll see you at 50. Uh, the answer to the question earlier of why we have the parens here is because this is a process that takes time to happen and we need to wait before doing other things beneath it. And essentially by putting this in parentheses, it says, wait until this is finished happening before doing the thing underneath it. So we're eventually going to have a couple other things in here and we're going to need to make sure that they execute in a very specific order. The rest of these things happen pretty quickly relative to this. This is, this is, think about what's happening here, right? We're actually connecting to a database outside of our application, and that's going to take the computer quite a while to do. The rest of these things are going to happen really quickly because all of these packages are local and they're just, they're going to happen instantaneously. But this is going to take a little bit of time. So essentially what happens here is it this will pause and will not move on to the next item until it finishes running. That's why we have parentheses there. You're going to see that when we get to Passport as well, because Passport Library is going to take a second to load up. And if the syntax is confusing on some of these, I get it. It's unfortunate that some, it's the payoff that we have with uh, using import syntaxes, that we're using fancy new syntax that's going to match what we have in React. But sometimes we just have to play by the rules of the developers that write this stuff. So it's, I mean, I wish there was a better way to do it, but we just have to use what they've given us, right? Most of these imports, like, this is a pretty standard, right? We're importing everything that's being exported, uh, or we're importing, excuse me, an object create error that has everything from HTTP errors in it. Whereas in this one, we're only importing file path or file URL to path from URL. There's more in URL, but the only thing we need from it is this. So that's all we're bringing in. So you're either going to be importing all of something or one single function from something or one single object from something. Or you're going to be executing a script file, which is essentially what's happening here. You're saying, go run this code and the code will do something, okay? This .env here refers to a node module. This is not a directory we've created on our machine, just to answer Patrick's question. I know it's already answered, but I just wanted everyone to see that. We don't have a .env directory, okay? This is essentially inside of our node modules. You'll see here, we've got a... Uh, the Okay. The config.js is right here. Okay, so this is what's technically happening when we run that. 
And then that's running extra stuff. And it's just it's running the stuff in this library. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff that's happening in here. Peek behind the curtain. Anybody have any questions on the database stuff now that we're all connected to our database and the schema that we wrote? We're going to take a break from the database stuff. We're going to get back to a little bit of formatting to make things nicer on us. Okay. One of the things that we have access to, Amanda. Okay. Um, one of the things that we have access to to make our lives a little bit easier when using a templating language like this is uh, called partial templates. And right now, every time you've created a view, you've been writing the full HTML in it. You've been using a full template or a full boilerplate on every single one. And that's not dry. That's not keeping our code dry, right? We're repeating ourselves every time we type that out. That's not what you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to refactor it a little bit. And we're going to use what are called partial templates. Okay. Partial templates are the best way to keep our views dry. So we're going to implement a couple changes to keep things clean here. Okay. In our views directory, we're going to create another directory called partials. And inside of that directory, we're going to have three files. We're going to have HTML head.ejs. I spelled that wrong. We're going to have nav.ejs. And we're going to have footer.ejs. Okay. Our HTML header is just going to be this. It's our boilerplate. Mine, what is our here? Let's look at what boilerplate looks like. Okay. It's our boilerplate minus a couple things. It essentially stops here. So it's just this part. It's just the head of our HTML document. Anything that we want to put above this closing head tag. But we've added this font awesome thing. This is so we can use an icon, some icons later. Okay, so let's copy and paste this into HTML head.ejs. Since we've imported this font awesome script, we have access to font awesome icons. And I know it says we're going to go talk about how the icon we're displaying works, but it's you can look up font awesome if you want to play around with that. The next thing we're going to have is we're going to build in our nav bar. Okay. So if you look at the structure of what HTML has, right, you have this doc type HTML, you have an open HTML tag, you have the head, which we need to close, and we need to open and close a body, and then we need to close the HTML tag. So in our nav bar, again, copy and paste this, we're closing the head, we are opening the body where we have our nav bar, which we're going to come back to here in just a second and talk about this. And then in the footer, we have just the closing body and the closing HTML. Okay. So all three of these pieced together is a full HTML document. You have this part which is everything but the closing tag in the head. You have the nav, which is closing the head, 
and has the start of the body throughout and the, essentially the rest of what we have in our app. It's just the nav bar, but we're not closing the body tag out yet. And then in the footer, we're closing the body and we're finally closing out our HTML. So these three things together makes a full HTML template, boilerplate, right? With an app bar. Brian? So is this going to keep our code dry? Because instead of having to write out a bunch of different HTML pages, we're just going to reference back to whichever part of this one that we need? Our EJS is going to look like this now. Instead of being this long, it's going to be this long. Because we're not going to okay. need to type all that out every single time. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Marcus? Um, how does it know which order to put them in if they're all separate files? We're going to tell it. Oh, okay. That's simple. Yep. Damien? Um, why don't we add the closing head tag to the header, HTML header, is it just in case we want to add more style sheets later on or scripts? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you can just throw it at the bottom of that file and not have to think about where the closing tag is. It's just, you know, it's going to be in the next file. So you never have to worry about it. Did you cool. say we <clears throat> we do have to close the head tag on the one that leaves it open or just know that it closes on the following one? It will close on the following one. So we okay. don't have to close it here because we know that as long as we set this up properly, we have our closing one here. So every one of our pages is going to have these three things on it. Every one of our views is going to have these three lines where we include the header, include the nav, and include the footer. And then any other things that we put in the middle of that will get added to the body. Because the head is closed in the nav, so we're good on this one. This one opens up the body, and the body is closed in this one. So technically, any HTML that I write in between these will show up in the header or in the, um, in the view, in the body. Now we can, we'll check this out. We're, we're going to actually test it out here, OK? So let's look at this index.ejs, this main index.ejs, and just wipe all of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that fun middle finger flipping you off squid that we haven't talked about yet. And that's what you use to include files. So you can actually load a partial view by including a file. And that's what that special squid is for. I'm pretty sure you can just type include. Now, EJS include. It doesn't give you the. And we're going to give it the path. This is important. Very important. We have to pay attention to where we're at in our views. And directory structure matters. This is, oh, we're going to see this error all over the engineering channel. For my Ooh. index EJS, I, I have a boilerplate already in there. Right. We just deleted that. Okay. Okay. So we're going to include, and we're going to give a file path. Where are we right now? If I want to start by linking our HTML head, if we're in this partials directory, we're not. We're in the views directory, right? Partials is here. If I want to get to HTML head, I need to go back a directory into views. Or do I? Where do I need to go? Is it in the current directory? Is it back a directory? You can go into partial. In the current right. directory. Current directory. So what does current directory show up as when I'm typing it out? Period. Period. Dot slash. Cool. Current directory. And I want to go into partials. And in partials, I want to use HTML head. And I don't need to specify the EJS extension because it knows already. Okay. 
let's add. Oh, not what I wanted. Oh, Alt Shift. There we go. Let's make another one for nav. And another one for footer. And let's add some HTML. Let's put a main tag, inside of which we'll put an H1, where we'll display our title. EJS out, title. And if you refresh, If you look at the HTML here, you'll see, let me make this a little bigger, that we've got the head, which has all of the things that we're supposed to have here. Some of these are coming from the font awesome. We've got the body and inside the body, we've got our nav. And we've got the main tag that we just added. And then we've got our closing footer. So all of this stuff is showing up just like it should. That's how partial templates work. Amanda? In our nav.ejs, um, how is the film image uh, connected? Like, what is that I class tag, tag sure. line of script? The I tag is an icon, and this class system is brought to us because we're using Font Awesome. So Font Awesome that we're linking in our HTML head here, the script tag, brings in a, a whole bunch of icons that you have access to using Font Awesome. So because we are importing that script tag, it gives us access, just like Bootstrap would, to a series of class names that we can use to display things. This is an icon pack, so it gives us access to a bunch of icons. So that if we want to make an icon, all we have to do is put an I tag and give it a, the appropriate class name. Nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the nav, too, because we haven't really talked about what's going on here. What, what is this craziness? We've got a lot going on here. Make this a little easier to read. In our nav bar, we've got our icon. We've got an anchor tag that's add movie, right? It's just a link. And you'll see that the href is filled in already, slash movie slash new. What type of request will this make when we click on it? Get. Get. Oh, no, no. Okay. The other thing that we've got here is this. Title, triple equals, add movie, question mark, class active. Is there an extra back tick thing? No. Yeah, we're good. Otherwise, nothing. You're going to see how this works a little bit later once we actually have views to be rendered here. But essentially, what this is letting us do is we're going to be able to display which one of these active tabs when we have multiple uh, apps open or multiple. Let me just show you on the thing. So one of these is going to be highlighted. See how that is showing up as white now? If I click on add movie, it shows up as white. All movies shows up as white. We're going to be able to see which one is highlighted by keeping track of which title is being displayed. So I'm going to explain more about this later once we actually have the ability to make it work because we don't have that yet. 
but just know that this is going to come in and help us down the road to display things that look like this. We good with that? We're going to be able to dynamically render these different links differently based on whichever one is currently selected. It's kind of a neat trick. Cool. Since we're using title now in our EJS view for index right here, why don't we change the title to Mongoose Movies instead of Express, right? So let's go to the route right now where that's being handled. Ultimately, this is going to end up being in a controller function later. But let's go ahead and fix this. And instead of rendering Express, let's render Mongoose Movies. When you refresh, you'll see that. That's a feature. That's partials. Add partial views. Questions on partials? Can you push this? Just did. So um, I'm still kind of confused on like the middle finger squid. Um, so it it's basically taking like an unformatted JavaScript for value? Yes. That's going to be something like if you have to put something inside of a tag or you want to include an HTML file, uh, that's where you'd want to use that. OK. Cool. All right. Anybody seen this movie? I'm super old, so I watched it when I was a kid, even though it was well beyond or well before my time. I'm not yeah, that old. Cool. Yeah. Ricky Tiki Tabi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good movie. I just very much love the caption that you have under that gif. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I feel yeah. like there's backstory. He was, David was giving this lecture. I forget whether it was this co or the cohort before this or the one before that. But he was giving this lecture and he was having like a, a bad day or something like that. So I threw a bunch of images in while he was teaching and he would get to them and be surprised and it brightened his day that was really the point of it but now they're it just they're there and it makes sense because they're all he's a mongoose right yeah good times okay all right we're there we're at the five steps i know we've been kind of hinting at the five steps for a while talked about them, technically followed them, but now we're actually going to, to read them and use them. And I'm going to screenshot them and I'm going to give them to you in Slack. Save these. You're going to love these. If you're going to get a tattoo for your experience in this class, this is better to get tattooed than the chart because it's a little bit shorter. I mean, I would prefer you get a tattoo of the chart, but I realize that's not really feasible because that's a lot of text. You'd have to get like a big tattoo. You could fit this somewhere relatively small. It, it could be a dope back tattoo. You know, your whole entire yeah. back is just this. Yes. <laughs> be kind of hard Getting to read the, that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting the Ben Affleck back Phoenix, but instead it's just the chart. That'd be dope. Yeah. So let's talk about these five steps, okay? These are the five steps that you're going to use to implement any piece of functionality in your app. Okay? We're gonna determine the proper HTTP route, method and endpoint, use RESTful conventions whenever possible. The chart is not perfect. The chart is awesome, but there are going to be times when we have a complicated route that the chart does not apply to. The chart is perfect. It just doesn't apply to some routes. 
because they're going to be more complicated than the chart, the chart is able to handle. Okay, the chart is designed for simple restful CRUD. So we determine the proper route. We don't write any code for that. We just think about what the route's going to be and identify it. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to add the UI that triggers an HTTP request that matches the route we came up with in step one. If it's a link, we're going to make a link. If it's a form, we're going to write the form with the action. The third thing we do is we're going to define the route in the appropriate router module that matches that request and map it to a controller function that's going to perform whatever functionality we want. The fourth step, go code the controller that we just wrote. And then the fifth step is in that controller, we're going to perform the necessary CRUD action. It's always going to be one of those four things. Unless it's a redirect, technically. But we're going to perform the CRUD action, then either render, passing data in, in the case of a get, or if we've updated data or deleted data or created data, we're going to redirect. This is it. If you do these five steps, you can build your project. Granted, there's auth in there too, but still, like these five steps will do everything that you need for a web app. And these five steps are literally what we're going to be doing for the rest of the course. When we get to Taco Cat next week, it's the five steps over and over and over and over. This app is the five steps over and over and over and over. Okay. So let's start with by creating a movie. Okay. And just like we've talked about before, creating data is sometimes going to be a two-step process, two request process. Why? Somebody explain that to me again. Why is it two steps? You have to have one get function to actually receive the data from like your user or like input data. And then you have to have a post function to actually post it to the like page you're trying to go to. Sure. I would amend that with a little, uh, amend that a little bit and say the first request that we're going to need has to display a UI to the user, some sort of user interface that allows them to enter data. The second request is going to be a post request that takes that data and makes a post request to, so, so we can put it in the database. Okay. So that's that what again. we're going to do. Yep. It's right here. The first request is going to display a form for the user to enter the data. The second request is going to be submit the form with a post request to the server and create the data. Okay. Just like we did with to-dos, two requests. Got to show them a form first, render a view with a form, then take the form data and submit it to the server. Okay. So let's pull up the chart. I want to create, which, which one of these do I want? The create is not the word I meant to say there. If I want to display a form so that a user can enter data for a resource. Which one of these do I want? We want the get function second yeah. the bottom. Yes. We want the new controller action, right? This one right here. We want to get request to slash movies slash new. It's going to be a new controller function. We're going to return a view form to add a new movie. And we're going to render movies slash new. So we got a lot of work to do here right now. 
right? The first time we set up a resource like this, we don't even have a router or controller set up for this yet. So we've got a bit that we're going to need to do this first time. But once those resources are set up, we'll be able to go through each of these methods a lot more easily, right? Because we'll already have a router, we'll already have a controller. We just need to write the functions for it. Maybe write a view here or there, okay? The first time you do this, when you're setting this stuff up in your own applications, it's it, it's going to feel a little tedious because you're going to have to create a directory for models. You're going to have to create a directory for controllers, a directory for, well, you already have a directory for routes, but you're going to have to rename a whole bunch of stuff. And it can be really overwhelming, but just realize that the first time you've gotten that done, you're good. You don't have to do it again for that resource. Once you've created your controller for movies, that's it. You just add stuff to it. Okay. Once you have your movies router stubbed up, that's it. You just add stuff to it. So try not to let that overwhelm you because once the first part is the hardest. So we determined that we want to get request to slash movie slash new. Okay. What was step two? Add the UI. Don't we already have that in our nav bar? Cool. That was easy. What's step three? Define the route in the appropriate, appropriate router module. OK, that's a problem. Do we have a router? No. So we're going to need to do that. Luckily for us, this template that we use has this users router. This app isn't going to have users, so it could refactor it. Okay, eGen replaced us, or eGen replacement stubbed this up with this users.js that we're going to convert and use for the movies resource. So let's rename it to movies.js. And EVS code's probably going to ask, do you want to change all the imports? You can hit yes if you want, but I'm going to say no, and I'm going to show you where we need to change the files because our code is broken. Where do you think I need to change the files? In the server? In our server. We have two different things that we need to change. First, it's right here where we're importing it. Okay, We changed the name of this file to movies.js. Technically, the code runs now, but we still have some problems we need to fix. We need to update the mounted router, too. Yep. Right now, we're calling it users router. We're not talking about users. We're talking about movies. So we're going to import it as movies router. Then down over yonder where we're mounting it, instead of using the users route, I want to use movies. All my movies routes are going to start with movies, and they're going to use the movies router. Questions on what we just did? A quarter of you are going to have problems with this in the lab, so I'm going to go over it again. We renamed the router from users.js to movies.js. Okay, The reason that we are able to do that is because we're not going to use the users router for this exercise. It's there. It's So let's take advantage of it being there and just use it. So we renamed it, and when we renamed it, this code broke because we're importing the router into our server. So we renamed it here while well, we adjusted the path of the file. And then we renamed it from users router to movies router because we wanted to describe what resource it's going to route requests for. Then where we're mounting it, instead of having app.use slash users and users router, we had to fix slash movies and movies router because we want all of our requests that come to our server that start with slash movies 
to be processed by our movie's router. Cool. Let's go inside of that. Let's clean this up. Do we, do we, we can get rid of this. We don't need that anymore, right? We're not having a get request to slash. What would a get request with a forward slash, what would that be? Ignoring this function, like what is, what is this? The index view. Right. That's going to be fine. That's going to be tied to an index controller. We don't have that yet. So we're just going to get rid of it. We said that we want a get request to slash movies slash new, right? So we're going to write router.get slash new because movies is implied because we're in our uh, movies router. Well, hold up. We're supposed to link this to a controller function. Do we have a controller function yet? We don't even have a controller. So let's comment that out so our code still runs. Now let's go create a controller. Oh, looks like that's a you do. So I'm gonna let you do that. Here's the import as you should be doing it. Honestly, you could just copy and paste that if you want. So I'm going to give you five minutes. And what I want you to do is go create a movies controller. I want you to add the controller action and method and be sure to export it. You should be able to knock that out in five minutes. And when we come back, I will walk you through it. Cool. Hopefully we all got there. Let's check it out. Again, we don't have to put the EJS in there yet. The whole point of this was just to get it so that we have the route and the controller linked up. Okay. So as you can see here, we probably need a controllers directory, right? We don't have that. So let's create it. Okay. And again, just for clarity here, the reason we're getting this cannot find module that we're trying to import is because this file doesn't exist. We're trying to import something that doesn't exist yet. All right, so let's go in here. Movies.js. Now that should make our code happy. Typically when I'm building an app and realistically anything I'm doing in Express, the first thing that I do is set up all my resources like this. Like if I know I'm going to have my resources for movies and performers, I'll go create the router. I'll go create the controller for each of those things. I'll link them up. I'll get them all set up before I do anything else in an application. We're doing this step-by-step step so you can see how things are interconnected, but that's low hanging fruit as far as an app goes. If you know you have a movies resource, the first thing you should do is go create the resource for it or create the router and the controller for it. Right, mount the router, set up the router so it's connected to the controller. You don't have to put anything in those files. You don't have to put any routes. You don't have to put any controller functions. But stubbing them up just saves you the headache of having to do it as you're trying to work through a piece of functionality, right? It's personal preference. I definitely prefer doing it that way. Okay. What do we know we need in every controller? What should be the top line of every single controller you ever write? What do you have to import? Import, import your model. Yeah, because the model is responsible for the crud, right? So I'm going to import movie. Notice how if I capitalize it, what it that's even if I don't. Okay. Look at it tells me everything about my movie. And if I hit tab, I, all I have to do now is add the JS file, right? And we're good.
what else do I know is going to be in every single one of my controls? Love it. What's the controller we're asking asking for here? New. New movie as. Okay. Function new movie rec res export new movie as new. That looks good for now. Doesn't actually have the code in there, right? Beautiful. And let's go ahead and make sure that our router that I commented out earlier is set up properly. So slash movie slash new triggers my movies control dot. What? New. Why did that not autocomplete? I'm not asking you, I'm asking me. Hmm. Well, we'll, get, we'll go ahead and do some testing, see if it works, right? That's the whole point of this, to test our code. So let's console log something. Movie controller, or movie new controller fired. I click on that link. Yeah, we're good. That's how you test this console logs. Put a console log in your function to see if it fires, right? I think the reason that new is not green or uh, yellow is because it's one of those weird keywords. So it's trying to think of something else. So new is just not going to be yellow like the rest of these. Also, another fun note here, we got our, uh, let me uncomment that, sorry. Okay, we got our con console log. Why is this still spinning? Like it's still thinking. I console logged something, isn't this request over? Cause you didn't render it. More specifically? Is this still trying to look for the page that doesn't exist? It's, it could be. It could you be doing anything we want. In the function? By? We, did, we didn't give it a response. Yes. You have to respond. If you don't, this rec res, right? These are the objects that give us the, the power to access information regarding the request and the response. If we don't res dot something, this will continue to spin. Unless we do something here to end that request response cycle, it, it'll just continue in, uh, indefinitely. So we have to do something to stop it. That's why this is still spinning. If we're not getting an error, but we're not seeing that console log, what are we probably missing? Uh, could be any number of things, but I'd be happy to help debug. Did you click on the link to make it go? To get that console log, you have to click on add movie. I got it now. Thanks. Cool. Um, I have this well similar issue, but I'm getting a 404. I don't know if I just maybe missed, missed something. I mean, we don't have a view yet. So yeah. what are you um, getting a 404 on? Because a 404 is actually a routing problem. Yeah. So when I click add movie, it doesn't show my console log or, um, and then it just doesn't really load it just goes automatically when it says 404 in your terminal what does it say it says 404 and does it say slash get or get slash movie slash new yes so in your movies router does your route look like this router dot get slash new yes let's check it out Hmm. 
Can I see your server JS? Take a look at line 35 and tell me what's wrong. Uh, there you go. Sweet. That should work. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Jennifer. I'm getting um, an error on my server. Can cannot find module. Um, uh, cannot cannot find controllers module. Okay. Does your import Okay, so let's go to where the problem is. So, so sir. Well, where are you importing your controller? Like scroll up in your error here and okay, so cannot find movie day JS in your models. So take a look at your oh. movie.js. There you go. Great, thanks. Okay. So go ahead and rename your model to movie.js. Uh, gotcha. And then fire your server back up. Yay. Sweet. Cool. Ryan. So I'm getting something here saying max listeners exceed exceeded warning. Um, possible event emitter memory leak detected. Let's check it out. It's usually just a an Alice error. You can just refresh, <clears throat> but let's check it out. Yeah, you should be fine. It's working, right? When you click the button, you get a console log. This. That movie. Oh, I don't have the console log there. Okay. Um, hit the back button. And then there you go. There you go. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, every once in a while you'll get that error with MongoDB. It's just a, yeah, that's nothing to worry about. Cool. All right. Keep pulling away. All right. So the last part of this process is in our new controller here. Two actually do something, right? We want to create a new movie using the information that's, or not create a new movie, excuse me. We want to render a form so we can create a new movie. So let's follow the convention that the chart says. Remember, it says that we want to render a movie slash new view. Okay, so let's do it. Res.render movies slash new. And I'm going to show you one of the errors that you're going to have, or I'm going to show you two of the errors that you're going to have over and over and over that you need to be able to know how to solve. Okay. The first one is this failed to look up view. Okay. We don't have a movies directory in our views, and we don't have a new EJS inside of that. So let's start with that one. So inside of views, we're going to create a folder called movies, inside of which we're going to create, oh, create a file called new.ejs. Okay. 
right now just to test this. I'm just going to do that. Just to test. And when I refresh, I should see taco. That works. The second problem that we're going to have is here's the code for that. We're going to include our partial. So let's start by typing EJS include. Let's path to the file properly. We need to go back a directory into partials and then get our HTML head. Okay. So back a directory into partials. and into our HTML head. Okay. We know we're going to need this two more times. We're going to need our nav. And we're going to need our footer. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to import our custom style sheet. There are style sheets for every single one of these views to keep things nice and neat and organized. So if we have, we don't have a bazillion different CSS variables to keep track of in one main CSS file. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a link and we're going to link to style sheets slash movies, slash new.css. Cool. Steph? Is there a reason why we're not putting the dot EJS at the end of that include, like HTML head EJS? Uh, include knows that you're looking for an EJS file. Okay. Oh, one second here. That one thing. All right. So we are bringing in our style sheet. We have include in the head here for the header style sheet, which again, if we had closed out our head here inside of this file, we wouldn't be able to do this. So Damien, coming, coming back to your question earlier, why don't we just close out the head inside of this file? It's exactly for this reason. So we can bring in this custom style sheet, then close the head and start the nav, then put our content and then have the footer. Okay. So let's start by, again, just putting something simple here to test. Okay. I'm going to put an H1 that says uh, add movie, right? And I can, I'm going to edit it later, copy and paste what's in the lesson. But before we do that, I want to show you we have a problem. When I hit refresh, I'm going to get an error that says title is not defined. I don't see title anywhere here. Why does it say that? Where do I look? In the, In the EJS. Yeah. Let's take a look here. Partials, HTML head, what's in there? Oh no, I've got a title. Okay, I'm trying to render something here that I can't because it, it, it doesn't exist. I'm not passing that value of title in my render method. 
See? No locals object. I have to pass something here for that to work. And I have to call it title. And in this case, we're going to call it add movie as a string. And you'll see now that it works. You're going to get that error. We're going to solve that three times on engineering this weekend. I guarantee it. If you're missing, if something is undefined, variable is undefined that you're trying to render in a view, you're not passing it in the locals object in your render method. Jen? In your link, um, when you link the style sheet, there's a slash and then a closing. Um, yeah, there. I noticed that is earlier. That I was, I was going to see if this worked or not before I brought okay. that up. I noticed okay. the one in here didn't have one because I shortcutted to it. And it didn't give me the autocomplete. I think technically we need the slash. Doesn't seem to make any difference. But let's see once we put the, the code in here. Okay. We're going to copy and paste this EJS. And that's what's going to live in our new instead. Okay, so instead of the silly ad movie, we're going to have this. So let's see if that style tag makes any difference with, with or without the slash. No. But I'll keep it as it is in the lesson. Did you take off the include partials dot? Oh, no, I say it, my bad. Cool. So just to review this, we've got, there's a bunch of stuff. I know we just copied and pasted a bunch of stuff, but notice here that we're also using that title dynamically here. Also notice, that this is now highlighted. This is highlighted because of CSS and because of this controller method here. We're giving it a title of add movie. And what we're saying in our nav bar is if the title that we're passing this page is add movie, give this a tag a class of active. And a class of active in the CSS will make it white. So this is dynamically styling the nav bar items based on a class associated with the title. OK, really, really cool trick. Awesome. So we've got a form. Okay. Form IDs and classes and stuff is just for styling. So notice we've left the action in the method blank. We're going to do that when we come back from lunch. But we have an input field here with a name of title. An input field with a name of release here. A select tag with a name of MPAA rating an input name of cast, input name of now showing. What do those things all correspond to? Our model. Our model. Those are all these fields. The name property in your forms or in your inputs in your forms has to match what you're calling it in here. Otherwise, when rec.body gets parsed, it's not going to line up and you're going to get a cast error. Or you just won't get the data you think you do inside of the database.
We're going to go over this again after lunch. I'm going to go over it. We're going to we'll dissect the form again before we pick back up. But this is now, that's the end of that five-step process, right? We've rendered the view that we meant to render, and it looks like it should look. So I'm going to add commit and push. This is uh, implement. Uh, how about display new movie form? Any questions for your lunch? All we've done is rendered a form so far. I mean, we set up partials, we stubbed up the model, and now we have router and controllers. So this is going to go pretty quickly from here. Steph? Um, I don't think my CSS is showing up the same way that yours is currently. It's okay. like all in the same line rather than like staggered or stacked like yours is. Well, let's check it out. Um, let me share my screen. I just added this to see if that was the issue, but I had it like this before. Do you hold, put your um, cursor in the browser and click so you're highlighting the browser. And now hit Command Shift R. Okay. Um, it's getting your style sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just stacked the way yours is. Why is it getting? Have you read the NAS after style sheets? It's like in plural and link. It's right here. Oh. It's supposed to be style sheet. Yeah. Like here or here? Yep. Oh, That's there not it because mine is singular and doing the same thing as well. Oh, oh. no, it was that. What Mine did doing? that stacking until I refreshed my browser. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's all. Amanda, is, is yours fixed? No, it's not. Okay. Share your screen. And I have the singular style sheet up here. Do, can you do Command Shift R in your browser? Yeah. You're missing the, the second one has yeah. to be your style sheets, yeah. not style yeah. sheet. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. my God. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> cool. You can use autocomplete for uh, that line. You start with link. Just type out link, and it'll it'll get you most of the way there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Anybody else? Errors? Questions? Sweet. We have most of our work done for us. I know it sounds like we have a lot more to do. We do have a lot more to do. But the resources are stubbed up. So from now on, it's just the five steps. We don't have to worry about creating any more controllers or any of that stuff. We're just going to rinse and repeat those five steps until we have CRUD, and then we'll be done for the day. And then you can start working on your labs, which I'll introduce later. So. Take a break. I'll see you in an hour and two minutes, and we'll keep going. All right. So we left off with our form here. Um, again, I said I'd review the form again when we got back, and I'm going to do that. Um, we have gotten to the point where the controller function that we've written so far is just this movie's um, new controller function. So this will render a view, which we can use to then do something with, right? We're going to have our user enter the data for the movie and the form. We're going to submit the form. We're going to make a post request and then do something with that data on the back end. So that's going to be our next step. But I just wanted to review again what we've done to make that happen. <clears throat> and I'll end that with a summary of what the form is doing. So when we cloned this, uh, when we copied the code from the nav bar into our EJS file here, we had an A tag. And that A tag 
had a which is a link had an href of slash movies slash new. So that is going to be the route that is triggered when we click on that link. It's a get request to slash movies slash new, which in this case hits our route for movies. And again, this doesn't say slash movies slash new here because the movies is implied. When we take a look at our server, we've mounted all of our movie routes to use our, our movies router and organize them such that all routes that start with movies will hit this router. So the slash movies was on server JS, forwards us to this router and we have the slash new here. So slash movies slash new. That triggers our new controller function, which will fire this uh, controller function. <clears throat> This controller function is going to render a new.ejs file that's inside of our movies directory, which is inside of our views directory. And we're passing to it a title property. And this title, the uh, title property is what we're using to render this on the page. And incidentally, up here, we're also using that to render the title in the uh, uh, HTML. So if we look at our HTML head, the title tag inside of that is also being rendered. So you get to see that as well. So we're using that title that we're passing in our render method for two different things. And you can see that if we were to change it. If I change it here, you don't need to do this. But if I change this to waffle, right, and I hit refresh, it's going to change to waffle up here. And it's going to change to waffle down here. So this is happening dynamically. Also notice that our conditional styling goes away. OK, notice how this add movie here right now is kind of like a black text color. If I have this set as add movie, it shows up as white. And the reason again that that's happening is because in our nav bar, we're using this fun little tag here to say, or fun little bit of code here, to say if the title that we are passing to this whatever view we're rendering <clears throat> is add movie, spelled exactly the same way as this, then we're going to give this a tag, a class of active. Otherwise, don't do anything. Okay, And this allows us to conditionally style whatever tab we're on so that we can see what page we're on in our app. See how whichever one I click on is, it's going to take a second for that to fire up because it's on Heroku. But whichever one of these I click on is now highlighted. So it gives us kind of some visual feedback as to where we are in our application. It's just a good practice for user experience. So the form that we're rendering here in our new EJS has fields and labels for all of our properties that match exactly what we've set up in the model. Each of these has a name property. Each input has a name property that matches exactly the same way that we have this set up in our model. So for our movie model, we have a title, release year, MPAA rating, cast, and now showing. Okay. Each of those things is represented by one of the UI items in this form, which you can see on the page right here. Again, super critical that the name property matches what you have in your database, or else you're going to have problems when you get to the back end trying to get things into the database properly. Does anybody have any questions with the stuff we did before lunch? Happy to answer those now before we move on to new stuff. Then let's move on to new stuff. Clicking the new movie link displays a form, but it doesn't work. <clears throat> okay. Just like David the Hangry Mongoose jumps from spot to so spot in search of snack, adding data is a two-part process. So what happens if we enter a movie and hit our form, right? I spell that right. All right. If I hit add, what happens? You have a property on your form that tells it what happens. I think it's currently blank. Okay. So if we leave that 
action blank, what has just happened? Is it taking the request, but it doesn't have anywhere to route it? Technically, no. It does have somewhere to route it. And it, it made a request. It. it turned it into a get request. And it appended all of the things that we added here to the end of the route as a query string. You'll notice here, it's we have this, it, it made a new request with all the info we entered, also refreshed the page, but it made a request here to the same page we're on with exactly what we entered in all, all of our fields as query string parameters, right? That's not what you want. That's the default action and method on a form. It's gonna be a get request, and it's gonna take all of the values that you've got in your input fields, and attach them as query parameters to whatever the same route is where you're at, right? We don't want that. What method do we want? You want a post method and see if we right. can override. Can, do we? Mm, maybe, no. What methods do we have available via HTTP without having to use method override? Get and? Oh, get and post. Yeah, so, so we're good. We don't have to override anything quite yet. So what's our action? What goes in there? And why? And where did you find that information? Who's feeding you the answers? Would it be create for the action? No. Nope. Slash movies from the chart. Yes. That's correct. It's slash movies from the chart. Create is going to be the controller function. The controller action is going to be a create method, right? But the action inside of a form is the route that we want to take. The method is going to be post, and the endpoint that we want to hit is slash movies to create a new movie, which will be a create controller function. And we can redirect wherever we want after we do that. Realistically, it'd be best to go to a movies index. After you create a movie, you see the list of movies that's been added or you go to the movie that you just added because you want to see the details for it. Either of those options would work. We're going to start off by rendering this page again. So we're just going to refresh this page essentially because we don't really have anywhere else to go yet. We don't have any other views. So that's why we're going to set it up this way. So let's follow that five-step process. We just talked about the UI and what or what we talked about the endpoint that we need to hit. That's part one. We know that we need a post request to slash movies. Cool. Step one done. Step two, add the UI. The UI in this in this case is going to be our form. So we need a post request to slash movies. Cool. Step one, done. Step two, done. Step three. We need a route. So let's go into our router. We're going to add a post request. I'll put comment here. This is a post to slash movies. And I don't put the movies there. If I put slash movies, it's actually going to be looking for a request to slash movies slash movies because we are in the movies router. Okay. Then I'm going to do movies control dot what was it again? Create. Create. Cool. Server's unhappy. Why is my server unhappy? What's the error that I'm getting down here? Probably router dot whatever is expecting a controller function, but got a object undefined, right? Look at that. Router that post requires callback function, but got object undefined. It's because we're not exporting in our controller a function named create. Let's go do that. We're going to stub up the function before we do anything else. Function, create, rec res. Come down here, and we're going to export it. That should make our server happy. If it's not, we're going to debug it because we move one step at a time. 
we're good. So now we can talk about what goes in here. Okay, this function is, we've already imported our movie model. We did that already. This function is gonna look a little scary. Okay, um, before I even scroll to it, I'm gonna give you a little disclaimer. I know you're all scrolling through it because hopefully you have Notion open. By the way, if you don't have the Notion open, like and follow along in the code, you are doing this wrong. You need to have this open because you're gonna need to copy and paste some code from some of this stuff. So please, please, please have this open if you don't. Okay. So we're gonna have to do some stuff here when we create this function. I know this looks scary, but we're gonna walk through it. This is really not that bad once you think about what we're doing in here, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is let's deal with the checkbox, okay? We've talked about that before. We know that a checkbox is gonna come in as either done or nothing. It's either gonna be undefined or not done, on, sorry. It's either gonna be on or nothing. So if it's one of those two things, we can tell truthy falsy. So we use our little bang bang thing to set the incoming value of that to a Boolean, true or false. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, okay? Rec dot body dot now showing equals bang bang rec dot body dot now showing. Okay, and I'll put the comment in here. Box of nothing or on to Boolean. Okay. The next thing that we need to do, again, don't get too wrapped up in this because when we do this for real, we're not, like when we refactor this app, we're not going to have text comma or comma separated text values. We're going to build this so we actually reference the performers. But for right now, our users are supposed to send in their cast for a movie with commas. So let's split the cast up where there are commas. So we're going to say if rec.body.cast, because maybe the user didn't enter the cast, right? It's not required. Maybe they didn't enter it. If we don't have this here and the user doesn't enter a, a cast, we're going to have a problem trying to run split on it, right? So if rec.body.cast, we're going to say rec.bodycast equals rec.bodycast.split, and we're just going to split them at the comma. Somebody remind me what data structure we just turned rec.body.cast into? Array. An array. Okay. Is that okay to do? Yes, because our model has it as an array already. Yeah. Our model's already set up to hold an array of strings, remember? That's what we want. Excellent. Just copy and paste this comment here. This is called massaging your data. Sometimes you're going to need to do that. If the data from your form doesn't match what it should be in the database, you need to adjust it before you send it to the database. That's going to have to happen sometimes in the apps that you build. Okay. Next, we Jim, will. Oh. Go ahead. I was just going to see if you could push. Uh, I'll push when I complete this piece of functionality, which is just a little bit longer. That's how I want you all getting in the habit of doing it is testing your code and pushing when you get working functionality. So that's how I'll do it for all this app. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our movie using the model. So we use our movie model to create, and we're going to pass in wrecked up body. Then the resulting movie is returned in a promise, that movie document that gets created. Okay. Then we said we wanted to do what? Redirect. Right now, let's redirect back to the same page so we can enter a couple movies. 
and because we don't have any other views right now. Okay. So let's go res.redirect slash movies slash new. And our error handling. Catch. There's an error. If there's an error, I want to do more than just redirect. I want to console log that error. And then we'll redirect. Right? It's best practice to at least show your error, right? In a situation like this, are we going to ding you for console log having a console log in your code? Absolutely not. Because this is a way that you're able to see what's going on. If there's an error, you should be displaying it somewhere. Okay? This is okay to have in your code when you turn in your projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this. And if it works, we'll push the code and be moving on to the next step. Maddie, what's your question? Um, so I've been following in Notion and for line 19 with the res redirect movies slash new, um, the Notion has back ticks instead of quotes. I want to see if there was a reason or if it was just a button. Foreshadowing. Okay. We'll get there. We're eventually going to refactor that to use the ID of the movie that we're creating, but we're not there yet. Okay, cool. Cool. Excellent. Let's test it out. Let's see if it works. What would be another good thing to throw in here? Maybe we console log the movie after we create it, see if that worked. I like that. We can get rid of it if it works. Nothing wrong with that. Let's test our code as we write it. Okay. So I'm going to add star. Well, is that already on my, well, I did a fresh database, right? There's no movies on my list. Star Wars. Seven. I think it was PG, right? And I look at the eye. Oh, th this is why autocomplete is good sometimes, right? David, so oh, turn it off when you build your, it's nice to have when you're testing your apps out. So don't always turn it off right at the beginning. Yes, it's better for user experience to not have autocomplete turned on. But when you're testing your apps, super useful. Not shown. We hit add. Okay. Why didn't that work? This is actually a fun, fun error. I didn't refresh my page. I didn't load the new page before. So let's go to add movie, refresh, give it a nice refresh, and then we're going to enter our stuff in. Okay. And if we hit add movie, we should see a couple things. First, we were redirected back to this page. But that doesn't tell us much because whether we had an error or not, we came back here. So, okay, that's information, not necessarily useful. But you see, if we scroll up, we're console logging the movie. And since this has an object ID, we probably did it right. Okay. Notice we've got title, release year, MPA rating. Cast is an array of strings, now showing as false. We have an object ID. Oh, look, and because timestamps, we've got created at and updated at. Stubbed up for us. What's the next thing you think I should do if I wanted to, if I forgot to put that console log and I wanted to check to see if my data existed? Could you check in your database since we use the create function? Yeah. I'm going to pause the record. So we've identified the database by pasting our ENB string in here. I go to Mongoose Movies. I go to movies and you'll see that I've got a movie with all of the things that I just showed you in the console log. Okay. Array of strings for cast now showing as false. So our bang bang is working. Release years coming in as a number. MPA rating and title are both strings. So we're good to go. That means I can add, commit, and push my code.
I just implemented a feature. This is implement create functionality for movies. There's a very specific pattern here to when I add commit and push. And the reason that I don't want to add commit and push in the middle of typing something out when it hasn't been completed yet is that there are a bunch of reasons. The main one is because it's what I want y'all doing. I want y'all adding, committing, and pushing when you implement and create a feature and test it and it works, even small features, okay? How many commits do we have already on this project? Let me look. We have, well, that's not right. One, two, three, four, five already on this, okay? Cool. So where do we go from here? How about we work on some errors? See how much happier David is when he's not angry. What a good little mongoose. Who's got who's got bugs? Who's got errors? I know someone does. None of you are error free. All right, there we go. Tiff, what you got? All right, I got a four hundred four not found. Um, wait, let's see. Show my screen. Okay. So um, IAs and instructors, I want us to be quiet. We're going to let the class debug this one. All right. So, um, so wait, 404, 404 means, is it's, it's typically a route's broken, right? Always. Yes. You're not, you don't have a route that matches what your request is. So who yeah. sees so, what the potential issue is without even like you see it right now on the screen. Anybody? Notice how she's not even at her routes right now. We can see what the potential problem is. What I'm looking at is this. What type of get request did you just submit? Oh, oh. Sorry, I gave that one away. <laughs> okay. I think you need to refresh your page before you submit your movie is problem number one. I think you ran into the same exact problem I did. So hit the back button in your browser oh. and click on add movie up top. Up, no, 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 sorry. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh. I'm at the link. Yeah. Okay. So that'll give you a nice fresh reset. Okay. Now enter your data. You're good. Oh, it does look like it's working now. Ooh. Yep, it was That's just right. that refresh. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Anybody else? Cool, Patrick. Yeah, I got a five, an error. Um, cannot set headers after they are sent to the client. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, share your screen. Let's take a look at your controller function. And you're going to see that you have multiple reses. Likely. Um, let's see. The rack on his top function is grayed out. Is that? Fine. That's fine. We're not using it. Um, usually, that's what this is. Then movie redirect. That's good. Your catch is in the right place. Can you try that again? Sure. 
I can refresh this. Cool. Okay. So let's take a look at your route. Usually this is a an issue with your trying to respond multiple times. So you want to see this. Yeah. Movies control dot create. Can I see your form? Very interesting. Okay, let's go back to that controller function. That's um, the, the issue has to be here. Usually this error means that you're trying to respond more than once. And you're not getting an error console. Can you, okay, so our next step here uh, for debugging, I'm so glad that this is happening because we get to check this out. Go ahead and put right here above your redirect a console log of movie. Okay. Yep. And put a comma in next to your error and put a string that says something notable. Uh, make sure you console log movie. Like the string movie? Or... No, uh, movie the variable, the document that's being created. We're going to see if it is actually being created. And next to error here, put a comma and put a string that says like create error. Okay, and then try to do it again. Uh, I think I know what this is doing. Try it again, but add two actors with commas, with a comma. Sure. Okay, that's not that either. So let's take a look at your console here and let's read some of the errors that we've got. It looks like you're creating the movie because we're getting the document ID. And then after that, what is going on? It's not erroring out, is it? Can you scroll up so we can see what that data looks like? Okay, it's working there. Title, release year. Oh, this is fun. Where is it? There's a, there's another response happening somewhere here. That's what this error means. I'm just trying to find it. Can we look at your server? Sorry, what do you mean by that? Server JS. Sorry. Oh yeah. Movies router movies. That looks good. Okay, scroll down. See where we have it mounted. That looks great. Let's check out your router again. It's a post to create. Patrick, can you go back to your controllers, please? Do 
Do we need a catch in the new movie? That's what I was asking. Because that's oh, you put a catch on everything. <gasps> but there's no he dot. Broke then. the chain. I think he's got the console log in there's, the wrong. There's no oh. dot then with your render. That's totally what's doing it. You're trying to do a dot catch, and that is exactly what's happening, is you're redirecting again. So that's what's happening, is you're, you've got res and res, just like I said. I just was looking in the wrong place. So you're, you're, what happens here is that you're trying to catch, but you don't have a dot then, so this catch fires anyway. And what you're doing is you're responding twice. So if you ever get this error that says cannot send... Uh, or cannot set headers after they've been sent to the client, that means that you have multiple responses. And that's exactly what you're doing. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Yeah. Nice catch. We have to give credit where it's due. Rachel posted about this like five minutes ago in lecture support. And oh, just cool. Yeah. Amazing. Nice work. I just Good didn't catch. want to speak it out loud. So thank you, Maddie, for voicing that. Cool. By the way, don't feel bad interrupting me if you see stuff like that. So nice work. Perfect. Excellent. Cool. Steph, what you got? Isn't that fun? By the way, isn't that fun? Like, that's why we do this. Those, I, I, I have to know. I have to know what it is. I'm so sad I'm not going to be here for Project Week. So I, where is it? I'm getting can't read properties of undefined reading now showing. Cool. Let's check it out. Yeah. I walked through the notion to see if I was missing things, but... Oh, you're being too bossy. That's what your problem is. I'm being bossy? Yeah, right here. You're being too bossy. <laughs> oh, my God. The S is killing me. <laughs> I cannot. No, not that one. How many times have I had an issue with an S being where it shouldn't be? There we go. We're good. Thank cool. you. <laughs> I got to watch the S's. Hello. Awesome. Anybody else? Error, error handling is fun. Cool. Um, Quick side note on actually, I while well, I'm remembering this because I'm totally going to forget this later. Um, the hurricane that is potentially happening now actually just passed by where I'm going to be on vacation very soon. Uh, and it reminded me that if we do have a situation where there's a hurricane, just stay in the loop. Make sure that you all have Slack on your phones so that you're able to stay in communication with us and let us know if there's something that goes on. Because if you lose internet, like, you want to be able to communicate with us and we can come up with the game plan. So just make sure that, you know, you keep us in the loop if you're in Florida and are affected by that, because it's looking like that may be a bad situation for a lot of you. So just keep us in the loop and we'll get you taken care of. We've had to deal with situations like this before. Y'all are going to be fine. As far as the class goes, just prepare, please, for hurricane if it's coming at you. Safety first. Yeah, we value your safety before the class. So but yeah, it is. This class means nothing compared to your safety. So like, please take care of yourselves. We'll figure out a way to get you through the course. Let's. That's not. We're not going to worry about that. Okay. We viewed data already, so I'm not going to do this. We just literally already did this. All oh, that's already done. Cool. So now, why don't we use the model to do that? Why don't we use a show functionality? Like if I want to look at the details for a movie, for example, we take a look at this one. I click on a movie and click on a details button. You're not sharing. Okay. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. You're right. The one downside to debugging. Okay. Um, so. Uh, bah, 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 bah. This is the completed app, right? If we click on all movies and I want to get the detail movies or detail of a movie, I should be able to see its details by going to a show view. So that's our next step. Okay. 
Mongoose is very capable when it comes to queries and what we're able to get out of something. If I want to find a movie where the MPAA rating was PG, where the release year is less than 1970, and Bob Hope is in the cast, sort them by negative title, limit the results to three movies, and select the title and release year, that is a feature you could do with uh, Mongo, MongoDB queries, or Mongoose queries, rather. Like, mm. you can do that. You can be very specific. Can you mute whoever is unmuted, please? Please mute yourselves. Thank you. Um, the querying capability of Mongoose is amazing. And you can perform very, very detailed queries when you're looking for data in your database. Okay. Um, we're going to start at the basics, but just know that you're able to do stuff like this. Okay. And what we're going to do, like if we've already talked about this, you've already seen this chart, is to use find by ID. Okay. Find is good if you're looking for something like everything, right? If you're trying to find everything, find is a great way because you just put empty curly brackets and it returns everything. You could also use find to find one thing. You could find something where the ID matches a specific value. You could use find one and do the same thing. They would work in the same, uh, the same way. Okay. This find by ID is exactly what we want, though, because we know we're looking for one thing, and we're going to look at it based on its ID. Okay, We don't want the first document that matches our query. We want the only document that has an ID of the ID that we pass in. So that's going to be the best option here. If we want, oh, we haven't done, what am I talking about? We're trying to do show. We haven't even done index yet. Man, I, that must have been confusing as shit for y'all. We're going to do index next instead of show functionality. So that you can have a list of movies. Okay, we're going to put you in breakout rooms for this. And you're going to struggle through it in groups. And have fun with it. Okay, so your goal is to go through these steps. And I'm going to read through these for you. And I'm going to show you what you're going to do. And then you're going to go and do it while one of the IAs builds some rooms for me, please. And thank you. So in your breakout room, I want you to implement the index functionality. You're going to display a list of movies, and you're going to follow these steps. First thing you're going to do is identify the route. Next thing you're going to do is add the UI to trigger a request by adding an all movies link next to the new movie link that already exists in nav.ejs. Make sure when you do that, that you also set up, if you're not paying attention right now, like hands off your keyboard and pay attention to what I'm saying. Please, please, please. This is super important. I'm going to start over. That's how important this is because I want you to be a contributing member to your team that we put you in here in a minute. Okay. You're going to implement index functionality like this. You're going to be able to look at all the movies. Okay. First thing you're going to do is identify the RESTful route. Use the jar. Next you're gonna add a UI to trigger the request. In your nav bar, you're gonna make another A tag, okay? Copy this one and just make another one that looks just like this, but just change the text, okay? That's gonna be where you put your href, that's gonna be where your route goes, right? Your title should be all movies, okay? Just like this. That way it is selected when we use dynamic styling. Then you're going to define the RESTful route. So you're going to write a route that matches the UI you just set up. Stub up and export the index action. Code out the index action to use the movie model to query for all movies. Use an empty query object to retrieve all documents. You're going to render your index EJS. Providing it to the uh, providing to it the movies just retrieved and a title. If you don't pass it the title, you're going to get an error. Then here's your index EJS. Okay, your index EJS is right here. But 
there are some things that are missing. This is not going to work until you fix it. Okay. This is an EJS comment. What you need to do here is write a line of EJS to iterate over the movies using for each. You can see here that you're going to need inside of your for each movies dot for each movies dot for each movie arrow function. So you're going to have to call it movie for this code to work. So you're going to put your EJS here that has the for each in it. You're going to close the for each here. And then right here, you're going to finish this ternary. Okay. This ternary is incomplete. For this to work properly and for you to not have an error, you're going to need to finish this out. You have movie dot now showing question mark. I'm going to let you do the rest. You have 50 minutes. I got to give you something to do. Does anybody have any questions before I set you free on this activity? Um, let's call it 50 minutes with a 50 minutes puts us at what? 34. So let's meet back up in an hour and you can take a break, 10 minute break too. So at 145 central, 245 Eastern, we'll meet back up. Share your screens, talk through the problems, be an active participant in your groups and have fun with us. Good luck. Hopefully y'all had fun solving that problem together. Um, raise your hand if your group got it working. Okay, got about half the groups, so that's good. Um, uh, which is better than normal too, I think. We usually have about a quarter of the groups get it. So you guys did really well with that. Um, hopefully you learned some good strategies and like debug things and console log things and use the tools available at your disposal to get at least somewhat in the right direction where you needed to get. Um, but we're going to go over the solution here. And um, we're actually going to wrap class up a little early today. I'm going to give you some time to walk through your lab. I'm going to introduce what your lab is. Um, and uh, we'll get you out of here a little bit early today. So uh, we'll talk about that after we get over the solution. So let's go ahead and check this out, shall we? So let's go back up here. And the first thing that we need to do is identify the RESTful route. Okay, The RESTful route for index controller action is what? Get. Get. Slash index. Slash index? No, get index. First one. OK, what's the get request to? Slash movies. Slash movies, right? The chart it indicates that the RESTful route that we're going to take would be a get request to slash movies. It's going to be an index controller function, but nowhere should we see in a route the word index. Okay, very common mistake as people are first starting to learn this, but if you have a route that says index somewhere in it, you're not doing it right. Okay, so you got to be careful when, you, when you're setting your routes up that you're following this convention and using these controller functions. Okay, these don't always go in the routes, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We know we need a get request to slash movies if we want to view all the movies. And I wanted you to put it in an A tag. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a copy of this. Okay. And this is a get request to slash movies. And I wanted you to write all movies. Okay. That's step one. That's step two. Okay, let's refresh. Good. Let's go to step three. Define the, the RESTful route. We identified the RESTful route, so let's go write it. In our routers, we're going to go to movies. We're going to have a get, and it's less specific than this. So I'm going to put get slash movies. And 
and we're going to tie it to an index controller function. Okay, step three is done. Step four, stub up and export the movie's controller index action. Okay, so we go into our controllers. Index, rec res, stub up and export that function. Step four is done. Step five, code the index action to use the movie model to query for all movies. As mentioned, use an empty query object to retrieve all documents. Start with that before we even get to the second part. So we're going to use movie.find. We're going to find all the movies. Then we're going to pass movies to this function. That's the first half. The second half, render views movies index EJS, providing to it the movies just retrieved <clears throat> and a title. Okay. Pres.render movies slash index passing to it movies and title of what uh, all movies. Well, that's this step. And then we're going to create inside of our movies directory an index.ejs. First thing we're going to do is test it. Cool. Second thing we're going to do is put this code in it. Okay. This has all your partials in it. It has your index CSS. We just need to fix the iteration. We passed movies to this, right? If we refresh, what do we see? There's a problem. I told you there would be because we've got this missing ternary, right? If we comment out the ternary, well, actually, we have to have these special EJS comments, right? That was a pain, but I think that might make it work. No, never mind. We're not going to do that. We don't need to do that. We're just going to fix the code, okay? Mm -hmm. So we want to write a line of EJS to iterate over the movies using for each. EJS each movies. Okay. Tab again, movie. And let's just move this down. That needs to come back a tab. And then Finish the Boolean out. Movie dot not showing. And what do we want to show for this? Yes or nope. So if the movie dot now showing Boolean is true, yes. Nope. And we should see our movies. Seven minutes that took us. Okay. This isn't hard once you start getting this rhythm down, okay? I know it, 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 you probably struggled with this and that's normal, but what I wanna show you is that once you get this down and get into this rhythm of identify the route, write the UI, write the route, write the controller, if necessary, render a view. Like once you get this down, it's not as hard as it seems initially. It just takes some practice and some repetition. Can you show the controller function again? Absolutely. I'm gonna, let me push because this is correct now and good. So, why question? Why did you put a movie slash index here in the render? Because that's the view that I want to render. It movies is my directory and the views directory, and inside of that is index ejs, which is what I want to render. After your dot, then why didn't it throw an error without a dot catch? You don't need a dot catch. Ah. I should put that in there. In fact, before I add and commit, I'm going to do that because that's good practice. But you don't have to have a dot catch. Technically, if I'm going to the index route and there's an error, 
but I wouldn't want to send my user back to the index route because then it's going to create a bad loop situation. So realistically, I this is tricky, right? Right now we can send them to the movie's new page, but because we know that works, but realistically, you'd have to figure out what to do here. Okay. If there's an error. Let me add and commit this real quick, and then I'll answer some more questions. Okay, Steph. Um, can you show your, um, what was it, index? Uh, no, your route, sorry. Absolutely. Oh, um. Online. So for the index, I had to add, uh, mine was router.get, and then the slash had index after it. And if I take that out, I get a 404 error. That's because you're not routing properly in your UI. In your UI, you've probably got, in your nav bar, you've probably got slash movie slash index, which is not proper RESTful routing. Oh. If you, the chart, the chart, nowhere in this chart do I have the word index in any of my routes. Perfect. So for okay. an index controller, the index is the name of the controller for the route. It's just slash. It's a, just a get request to slash whatever the resource name is, plural. In this case, movies. Again, that's a super common mistake that a lot of people make when they're first learning this. Like, oh, an index route. That must mean that I have to put index in the route. But no, you don't want to do that. A lot of people do that. We see that all the time at the beginning. Mm, I updated that. And I'm still getting a 404 error. Um, okay. Why don't you share your screen? We can help have the group help troubleshoot it. Actually, the group this time. I had to jump in last time because it was a weird problem. So. Okay. Here is my screen. So I updated it here. In your URL, it's still index of your browser. That's why. There we go. Thanks, guys. It's always the simple things with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Cool. Ryan? Uh, I guess one thing that I ran into was I had everything except for the title all movies bit in the index function. Mm -hmm. um, so it was throwing me a, a big old error. Um, I guess I'm, I guess, can, can you just talk a little bit about why that title needs to, to be there? Sure. So if we look at the code and we are asking for a title in our nav bar, we're saying on our, our EJS right here for index, right? Is the first thing that's up here is render the header and render the nav bar, right? Include the nav bar. So in my nav bar, this code right here, I'm saying, hey, make this determination as to whether or not the title is equal to something. It needs to know what the title is. If you don't pass it a title, it's not gonna be able to make that determination. You're gonna get this error. Title is not defined. Yeah. Okay. There's an infamous, you may have seen him post, Corey Spicer posts all the time in engineering and uh, more so on off in off topic now than in engineering. But he failed his unit one assessment or unit two assessment. One of the smartest people that's come through this program, most intuitive, amazing students I've had. And he failed his unit two assessment and turned into a joke because it was because the resource was undefined. And he spent out like pulling his hair out, trying to figure out what it was. And we fixed it and like I think in nine characters or something like that. <laughs> like it's, it, you just have to look. And it's, if something is not defined in a view, the reason, and this is one of those always things. If it's not defined in a view, it means that you're not passing it to the view somehow. Okay. Most of the time, 95% of the time, that's going to be in your render method. Okay. There are going to be some situations when we get into auth where we're using middleware to pass stuff around. But for the most part, it, just look in your render for whatever the view is. 
and okay. see if the data is there. And if it's not, you're going to get an error that says, hey, you're not telling me what this is. Okay. Yeah, because I kept going back and forth between the the HTML header and like any other place where the the variable bit mm -hmm. title might have been. I'm just like, no, it's it's there. What do you mean it's undefined? <laughs> yeah. If it's not being passed to the view, then in the locals object inside of your render, then you don't have access to it inside of the view. So. Um, there's actually part of the response object is uh, res.locals. And you can actually respond, like you can add a locals object to the response. And that's something we're going to learn, learn about when we get into auth. But there's a way to actually attach stuff directly to that in middleware. So that when we eventually end up with a user, and you have to be able to keep track of the logged in user throughout your application, our middleware is actually going to process that using a package called Passport and add that user to all of the requests. So you have access inside of your views automatically without having to pass it in every single render. It's awesome. But you don't want to do that for everything because you don't necessarily need. And oh, that the other reason you don't want to do that with everything is because these titles are dynamic, right? This is all movies, whereas this one was ad movie. You can change them and do things with them, right? When you, you highlight each of these things, they show up differently. So hard coding that in a res.locals wouldn't be a good idea. Okay. Expect this to feel tricky for a little bit, but realistically, you've seen this now twice. Okay, you've seen it with to-dos and now you've seen it with movies. So you should be getting to the point where create and index are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable because you've seen them twice and you've gotten to practice them in at least one lab. And you're going to get to practice them again in your, your other lab, the one that we're going to assign today. Do we have any other questions on this before I move to wrapping up the day? We're going to, we're going to stop right here. We'll pick up here on Monday. Uh, this weekend, if you still haven't finished your dev skills lab, which I don't think anyone is still working on that because you all, no one had any other questions this morning about what to do. So it sounds like you're all done with that. But um, if you're not done with that, you need to finish that up so you can start working on your flights lab. And flights lab is a doozy because it is a three-part lab. Okay. Part one, part two, part three. In part one, you're going to repeat all of the things that we do in this lecture, which technically is not over until Monday. We're going to finish this lecture Monday morning. Part two is also going to be over the stuff that we learn Monday afternoon. Part three will be over the stuff that we go over on Tuesday. This lab is due on Thursday next week okay if you wait to start on this lab until next monday that's not going to be a good time for you to finish this okay you've got to start this this weekend i would get to where we got finish your index functionality okay i'm going to pull this open so you can see what this is okay we created and read documents you're going to do the same in this example, we didn't do a show view here. So you're not going to do a show view yet. If you want to do the show view, it's not terribly difficult. But this part, these two items down here as a user, these user stories are not things that we have covered in this lecture yet. Have you seen them before? Yes. You've seen them in Express to Do's. So I don't think that this is a stretch asking you to be able to do this. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this because we haven't done it in this lesson, that's fine. What you're going to do for this lab is you're going to mimic everything that we've done in the uh, movies lab or in the movies lecture. You're going to create a flight. Use the eGen replacement to create a flights project. Install the node modules. Create your database connection module. 
make sure you import it inside. Ooh. All right. You're going to create a flight model with the following properties. And you're going to implement the following user stories. I want to view a list of all flights that displays each flight's airline, airport, flight number, and departure date time. I want to create a flight by entering the information on a new view that has a form. When I submit the form, I should be taken back to all the flights. As a user, I want to be able to access each view via a navigation bar at the top of the page with links to all flights, add flight. I want to be able to delete a flight. I want to be able to click on a flight to show its details. And I want to be able to click a button that brings me to an edit view where I can edit the details for something. Okay. These are things that we haven't covered yet. Same thing with delete, technically. Okay. So we haven't done these yet. We're going to do these on Monday. Delete is a, a cakewalk, okay, compared to edit. So delete really shouldn't be too, too difficult for it. It's add a button and write a route. The controller function is really easy. It's just find a find by ID and delete. I think they and saw redirect. They saw delete yesterday. They saw update too. They saw everything. You've all seen all of this before. It's just not in context of movies. Okay. What Hunter's saying is y'all should be able to do this. And I agree with him, but being generous and saying that we haven't shown it to you twice yet. So you may feel uncomfortable doing this. You should feel more comfortable with this stuff because we've done it several times now. Okay, there's some hints in here. There's some bonuses in here. This is due next Thursday. Please, please, please start this this weekend. Okay. This lab is going to be how you learn how all of this stuff works. And you don't want to wait until you start your project to start making those connections. Okay, those connections need to start happening now because your project is going to be go time. This is probably the best lab of the course too. Yeah. It's, it's like your first, this is your first like real app that you'll be building. Could not agree more. Maybe with the exception of the Carmen San Diego lab. That's a joke. No, I think the best lab is the React Bill lab. Oh, that's good. That's true. That's that is way better. Um, excellent. Does anybody have any questions on this? Monday, we're going to finish this up. So we'll do a show update and delete. That won't be too difficult because show is not terribly hard. Delete is really easy and update is a two-part request, but we've done that before. Update's not going to be that bad because we're going to poach a lot of the code from the, the create functionality. Like our form is going to be just ripped straight off of our form that we already have, which is going to tweak some stuff. Okay. You're going to find that once you get yourself set up with index and create and you have your resources stubbed up, these apps start happening a lot faster. So have some fun with it. Make sure you take things one step at a time. If take, Have the lesson open, go through the lesson and do the things in the lesson. But instead of using a movie, do a flight and just follow the instructions. Okay, These labs are very well organized. You shouldn't have many questions on them. This one's been rewritten so many times that we think it's amazing now. We've made enough modifications to it over time. On Monday afternoon, you're going to learn how to embed things within the flight. So a flight will have, uh, what is it, tickets are embedded now? So a flight will have tickets that belong to it. A flight will also be able to be associated with many destinations. So we're going to reference destinations in a flight. And they're going to learn that on Tuesday. But that's next week. If you get done this week with this and you have time to kill, you can either read through some of the stuff we're going to be doing next week or build another app. Play around with this stuff. Test it out. Go through. You know everything you know to do 
everything you need to know to do CRUD now on one of these apps. We've already technically gone over it. Mongoose movies is just the, the big part of Mongoose movies is associating data with one another. The stuff we do in the first part of this, the first third of this lesson, the first third of this Mongoose movies lab or flights, God, the first third of Mongoose movies is stuff that we've already done. Minus partials, you've seen it all before. So build a CRUD app. It doesn't have to even be styled. Just throw something together and see if you can play around with creating, reading, updating, and deleting data resources. Practice it. The more repetition you get in on this now, the easier experience your project is going to be. If you don't understand flights and you wait until the last minute to do this lab and squeak by with it, your project is going to suck. Okay? Wor working on your project is going to suck. Don't put yourself in that position. Use the engineering channel. Ask questions if you have them. Be clear. Read your errors, please. The errors do such a good job of telling you what's wrong in most situations. If you're reading them, you should be able to figure it out, especially if you've you know, been paying attention when other people have had errors in class. We've seen all the big ones. Any questions on your flight lab? What we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you your survey link to go do for your quick little exit ticket. Of course, there's not a link. So this is here for you. Go fill out your exit ticket and you're good to go for the day. We'll open breakout rooms back up if you want to use them. Have fun with this lab. Please ask questions when you have them. Like I said, this is you are going to use this lab when you go back and reference things for your project. Movies and flights will be your go-to reference for what you use when you're building your project. So if you slack off on this or you wait until the last second or if you don't understand what you're doing when you do it, your project is not going to be as enjoyable as an experience. So it's a truth bomb for you there. That's all I got. Quick question uh, mm -hmm. for Clippy. Are you going to open up a drop for the lab we have due on the 26th? Uh, if that's not already open, one of the IAs will be creating that in just a second. Cool. Thank you. The dev skills deliverable is already up and we'll add Mongoose oh. right now. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, flights were deploying, so don't add a link for that yet. Flight, you don't worry about turning your flights lab in yet because we're going to have a deployable link for that later when we go over deployment. Okay. 